All right. Hello again, Adventures, and welcome to another... I don't have a name for this anymore. I used to have cool, catchy names for when I did a do stuff like this, but this is me seeing something annoying uh, on the, 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 the internet and having an opinion about it because it actually relates to my degree. There's probably a really catchy name. In fact, if you would like to give a catchy name to this particular series that comes up randomly, give it to me in the comments down below. So, uh, for those of you wondering about the massively clickbaity title uh, where I basically say a d, &D YouTuber got it wrong again. Um, I, uh, I am a d, d YouTuber, though I have been doing a lot of D&D stuff recently simply because I kind of ran out of content. Um, I have covered literally, I think all, but, uh, maybe like three or four subclasses, uh, in, uh, in D and D in general and all of the feats and, and a bunch of other things. So, uh, anyway, haven't been doing a lot of D and D, um, stuff other than the, uh, D and D games that I run, but I am still very much involved in the, uh, uh, D and D, uh, kind of online world uh and there may be an announcement coming out soon about something brand new involving D&D &D that will hopefully be ready uh, hopefully by the end of the month but that's not what I'm talking about today today uh, I want to talk about D&D &D YouTubers getting it wrong uh and for those of you waiting for me to spill the tea and start harping on um a specific D, D YouTuber or something like that. I'm not going to do that. The reason why is the person that got the wrong take uh, doesn't really matter, um, and the take itself actually hasn't doesn't have anything to do with D and D. And everything to do uh, with the idea of what being a content creator is. Um, and um, it's actually a take that um, I have seen um, in a lot of uh, other g -g 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 uh, uh, other kind of subcultures and subgroups. Um, so I'm actually not going to name them. Um, I'm not going to directly quote them or anything like that because the purpose of this is not to review, refute the, 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 that specific person. It's to talk about um, a bigger idea that I constantly see getting wrong. Basically, what this particular d, &D YouTuber s -s 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 said um, was something along the lines of, you know, we really shouldn't be encouraging people to become full-time content creators. Uh, because for a lot of people, they just would enjoy it better as a hobby. Because being a full-time content creator is running your own business. And running your own business is extremely difficult. So we need to stop encouraging people to be content creators. We need to stop, you know, telling people, you know, follow your dreams and everything like that. And, you know, tell them that maybe this isn't the job for them. And... I have heard this um, in a lot of different things. Um, <laughs> growing up as uh, a musician, uh, this is extremely common advice that uh, is given to musicians. Um, the second you um, even like think about the, the, the idea of becoming a professional musician, you'll have everyone in the world going, you know, you shouldn't do that because being a professional musician is really, really hard and it's an extremely competitive field and it's just, don't do that. You, you will fail. Being an actor. I cannot tell you how many times I was, I was told you need to not know. You can be an actor that's perfectly fine as a hobby. You cannot go to school for acting. You cannot try and get a career as an actor. Um, it was so prevalent uh, that my parents uh, specifically told me that I needed to have a backup. Um, and they convinced me um, that I should... Um, I don't know if they convinced me or I convinced me as a way to convince them uh, to stop yelling at me for my chosen degree. Um uh, that I was going to get some kind of, I was going to minor in education. I was going to minor in something. 
um, that would allow me to teach uh, if the whole acting thing fell through. So I needed to have a b -b backup. So the idea of, hey, we need to stop encouraging people to um, uh, do these, these jobs that are highly c c competitive and very difficult to do is not a new thing. Um, and every single time I hear that, um, it's generally from one of two people or one of two kinds of people. One is someone that is upset that they had a life goal that they wanted to do and failed at it. And so uh, they don't want you to go through that same experience because it was very unpleasant for the, 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 them. Uh, there's a kind of subset of people like that that are just jealous. Um, and the reason that they're telling you not to do it is that if you succeed and they didn't, they will feel even worse. Um, that is one set of group. The other set is people that are really, really p -p pissed off that they have put all this work and effort into this incredibly competitive field and they simply cannot get further than they actually are. Um, and so uh, discouraging people from entering the field is beneficial to them. Um, I'm not going to say which camp this particular D&D uh, &D YouTuber is in. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I sincerely doubt that they are in either of those two camps exclusively. Not a whole lot of people are entirely motivated by one primary th 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 thing. However, when I hear advice like that, especially when it relates to the idea of, well, yeah, being a full-time content creator is effectively running a small business. Well, it's not effectively anything. It is. And small business ownership and entrepreneurship... Um, is an essential part of most economies. Um, if there is any kind of capitalistic influence in your economy in any way, shape, or form, entrepreneurship is extremely important. Um, and running a small business is hard. However, it is not massively complicated. Um, and newsflash, there are no easy jobs. Um, a lot of people go, oh man, you know, there's lots of easy jobs. Could you bet, like, uh, you know, uh, being a, uh, you know, working retail, retail is such an easy job. You just put stuff on the shelf and then you, and then it goes beep when you're at the register and that's all you have to do. No, working in retail is, is a minefield of horribleness. Um, and, <laughs> and, um, fun fact, more, uh, more retail employees, um, are murdered on the job than police officers every year. Um, now slightly misleading. There are a shit ton more of, uh, retail employees than there are police officers. Um, so, uh, the actual kind of ratio of like murders per hundred thousand, um, police officers are a little bit higher. And I mean that quite literally. They are a little bit higher. However, if you look at uh, injuries that force you to take time off of work, um, uh, working in retail is actually one of the most dangerous jobs um, uh, because there's a lot of stuff that goes on that people have no idea because you've never had to do it. Um, and that is true about every single job. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard teachers have it super easy because they only have to work nine months out of the year. <laughs> we'll deal with that one later. Um, truck drivers have it super easy because they're their own bosses. Accountants have it super easy because all they have to do is sit in a chair and add stuff. Every single job has got it super, super easy. And none of that is true. All jobs are hard. Every single one of them. Um, and running your own business is hard. Um, just like every single other job. But it's not an incredibly complicated process. Um, the problem with entrepreneurship in general is people underestimate how much work it takes to run a business. Um, something I love to bring up to people um, is the idea of payroll tax. Um, because uh, one of the one of the, one of the greatest lies uh, that I hate hearing um, is how this particular business pays no taxes. 
None of that is true. It has never been true. It will never be true. Businesses cannot exist uh, without paying taxes unless they are a nonprofit or some other tax exempt company. And even then they have a lot of other shit that they have to do that costs them not quite as much money as uh, to the taxes, uh, but the therapy costs get it right back up there. Um, all businesses pay taxes. The big ones, things like Amazon, everybody tries to, to claim that Amazon doesn't pay any taxes. No, they pay more taxes than any other country, uh, any other company um, in uh, the U.S., in, I believe, in the world, um, as far as like American uh, to the taxes. You want to know how they pay those taxes? Well, there's this thing called payroll tax. Um, when you are... Um, uh, when you are employed by someone, as in you are an actual employee, um, they have to pay a bunch of taxes on your pay. Like you get stuff taken out of your check, like your disability insurance uh, is taken out of your uh, check. Uh, Social Security, Medicare, um, all those things are directly taken out of your check before it is ever, um, uh, before it's ever uh, gotten to you. However, the business pays just as much taxes as you do on the money that they are paying you. So they're not earning money. They're not getting taxed on the money they're earning from you. They actually do. That's a completely different tax. They actually get taxed to pay you. That's called payroll tax. They pay uh, an equal amount of uh, Medicare, um, uh, Medicare, uh, uh, Social Security, and unemployment Um uh, and uh, they, there's a there's a few other tax like uh, uh, there's a, a thing called the FUTA tax F U T A. It actually has a, a, a thing. Do not look up that acronym. Don't do it. Those of you that know, no, just no. It's a real thing. All right. Um, and so um, Amazon pays billions uh, in, in uh, d -d 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 taxes. However, um, as far as uh, uh, that that particular c -c -c claim. Um, it's based entirely on the idea that they don't pay any income tax, um, specifically federal income t -t 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 tax, because they reinvest all of their money either in the business or in charitable donations or a bunch of other th th things like that. So um, income tax, um, you're only taxed on money that you make. And that means that any money that they do make, they immediately reinvest, which is the entire purpose of uh, higher income taxes and things like that is to encourage businesses or um, for um, tax breaks for um, uh, reinvesting in the business or charitable donations. It's to encourage people to do exactly that. Um, so that's what that's talking about. The reason I'm b b bringing that up is people don't realize that that's a thing. Um, and they don't realize just how complicated running a business um, can be if you don't take the steps to learn what it is. And I, again, I said just a few minutes ago, uh, running a business is not, uh, running a small business is not incredibly complicated. It's not as long as you do your research and you learn what it is that you're supposed to do. You know, learning what kind of business you are. Most uh, entrepreneurship start off as what's called a sole proprietorship. Um, and there's no paperwork that you have to file to become a sole proprietorship. For the most part, you just really have to um, start doing business as a kick company. Now, um, problems come in when you are a sole proprietorship because if your business does something wrong and you're a sole proprietorship, well, when somebody comes after you legally, whether that's the government for somebody filing taxes wrong or something like that, whether it is uh, uh, a customer that's suing you for something, whether it's an employee that's suing you for something, for sole proprietorship, um, because you and your business are one in the same, um, they can take your personal stuff if something goes wrong in your business. So a lot of small uh, small businesses uh, form what's called an LLC, a limited liability corporation. And basically all that does is it makes the business separate from you so that if the business gets sued for something, they can't take your house, your car, your TV. Um, however, forming an LLC means you actually have to separate 
uh, th 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 things. And you cannot ever use business expenses for personal things. And if somebody sues you and then while they're looking through your books, they find out that you were using business money for personal expenses, they can do a thing called piercing the corporate veil, which basically means they can go, mm, we're not going to consider you an LLC anymore. And we're going to take all of the stuff that you personally own. Um, as liability for the bad things that your business did, 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 did. So if all that sounds complicated, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. There's a few really basic rules that you can follow. There's a bunch of different places where you can learn all this stuff without too much difficulty. And if you really want a good education in business, you can go to, you know, uh, like a community college and enroll in a business class or two. We're talking about maybe you know, three to six months worth of information to run an entire business. And none of that is necessary. All this information is free. All this information exists in so many different places, um, a lot of different places, much easier to digest than others, but it's out there. We have one of the easiest to, um, uh, we have one of the easiest to learn societies uh, ever in human existence. We have all this information. Um, so the idea of we need to stop encouraging people to be full-time content creators because it's not for everybody. No, that's a hundred percent wrong. What we need to be doing is if we are going to encourage people to become full-time content creators, we need to not encourage them to, yes, find what you're passionate about and, you know, do, you know, follow the algorithm, learn how the algorithm works. No, fuck the algorithm. What we need to be doing is going, yeah, if you would like to do this full time, you should learn how a business works. You should learn um, what are called generally accepted accounting principles. They're called GAP. Um, learning that means you know how to keep your own books. And that is an unbelievably valuable thing. Um, by the way, a good accountant is worth it. Um, but a good accountant is expensive. The reason they're expensive is they're worth it. But um, learning uh, generally accepted accounting uh, principles, um, which is a legal term. Um, and if you are ever uh, audited by the IRS or a, anyone that ever wants to look at your books for whatever reason... Um, uh, the FTC, anything like that, um, they are uh, either going to require you to give them something that is built up in uh, gap policies, or they're going to send someone to transfer all of your documents into gap policies. And then they're probably going to charge you for that because it's very expensive to do. Um, so yeah, encourage people to go, hey, you should probably learn how accounting works. Um, again, accounting in and of itself, I hate. I think it's evil and disgusting. It was made by the devil. But the basics of accounting, understanding the difference between liabilities and assets, understanding how to read a column or notebook, things like that, that is not an incredibly difficult thing. If you want to become an accountant, that is an incredibly difficult, complicated thing. Um, but just learning how to, to read uh, a P&L report, learning how to generate your own P&L reports, that's not difficult. Investing in something like uh, Quicken or QuickBooks um, to help you run your small business is not an exorbitant amount of money. And the amount that you invest in programs that like, like that that help you to be able to do, like if you get, um, I always confuse QuickBooks and Quicken. Um, I believe it's Quicken for s s small businesses. Um, if you get those programs, they will automatically put things into GAP uh uh, gap qualified uh, documents into the things like that. So you don't have to, you just have to know which numbers to put where, which they have big, crazy labels on everything to tell you exactly where everything goes. Running a small business is easier now than it has ever been in the history of mankind. I personally believe almost anyone can run their own small business. Um, and the reason I believe this is because I have a degree in business and before getting my degree i was taught in about an hour and a half all the things i needed to know to run a multi-million dollar store it was literally um and it actually i think it was actually a little shorter than that because uh my boss's boss i think i've told this story before 
um, I was working, uh, uh, I was working in retail. Um, I was an entry level manager. I was technically a key carrier, not a manager. Um, but same basic difference. I was considered part of the management staff and, um, the store manager at the time had his head up his ass, um, was absolutely one of the worst store managers I've ever worked for. Um, not because he was lazy or anything. He preferred to do everything himself. And because of that, nothing ever got done. Because if he wasn't doing it, um, he wouldn't allow other people to do it. Or he'd be in the middle of something and someone else would start doing something and he would stop what he was doing to go over and do what they were doing so that he made sure it got done. And nothing ever got done. Um, and sales were suffering in the store. The whole store was uh, one of the worst stores in the district um, uh, profit, um, profit wise. And so his boss, um, dude named Dave, uh, comes into the store and he goes, hey, Jody. I'm like, hey, Dave. Uh, we were not on a first name basis at this point, uh, but he knew me because I was one of the strongest salesmen in uh, the district, in the company, actually. I was very good. Dave comes in, he goes, hey, Jody, um, you mind if we sit down for a second? That is a terrifying thing. If your boss's boss comes into your store, and my boss's boss, he was a regional manager. He did not work in this store. He didn't have an office in this store. The only time he showed up in this store was for spot checks and if somebody did something wrong. And having my boss's boss come in and say, hey, can we have a conversation? I'm like, oh, great. I'm getting fired and fined and sent to jail. I don't know. Um, so we go back and we find a desk, uh, in the middle of the store too, it was an office supply store. We went to the office furniture place. We sat on a desk and he brought out a couple of P&L reports and, and a few other things. He says, Jody, I need your help. Sure, Dave. What do you need for, for, for me? Well, store's not doing super well. I'm like, I'm sorry about that. I'm doing everything I can. He says, no, 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 no. You are doing great. You are, you are selling more than anyone else in the store has sold in six months. Um, you're doing amazing. However, your boss isn't and he's not listening to me and it's not worth my time anymore. So I'm not going to deal with him anymore. I'm going to deal with you. Are you allowed to do that? He's like, I'm his boss. I'm allowed to do what I want. Okay. Well, what does that mean? He's like, well, these are P and L reports and this is what this number means and this. And he walked me through how to run a business. And he goes, now, Jody, what I need you to do is I need you to get this store working and I need you to get this store um, profitable again, because if it stays like this, people are going to lose their jobs. And I don't want that. Um, but the store has to make money. And right now it is making so not money that something's got to give. And yeah, like I said, we sat down, I think maybe it was like 45 minutes to an hour Um maybe an hour and a half. I can't remember. It wasn't a super long meeting. And then he said, okay, you've got everything you need, do it. And in six months, the store went from worst in the, uh, worst in the district to one of the top three stores in the busiest district in the company. And that was from an hour long meeting with somebody that knew what they were talking about. Um, I have the utmost respect for Dave. Uh, he was corporate, which is a fourth letter, uh, four letter word. Um, but he and I, um, I, I would never call us friends, um, but we had a really good working relationship. Um, and he definitely gave me a leg up for the rest of my business career. Um, so if I can learn how to run a multi-million dollar store in an hour, anybody can learn how to run a small business in a couple of weeks. And really that's what it, it takes to go from part-time content creation, like what I did to do, 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 do um, and very, very part-time, to doing this for full-time. Um, it's a few weeks of hard work learning, and you have to learn how you learn the best, because not everybody learns the exact same way. So that does take a little bit of work. But after you do that, after you stop looking at this... At, Excuse me. After you stop looking at this as, oh, this is so fun and pretty and I can just do whatever I want. And you start looking at it. Okay, this is a business. I have a product that I'm selling and I need to make enough money to support myself. And these are the ways that I'm going to do that. It becomes a lot more simple. Now, 
It doesn't become easy. A job is 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 a job Jobs are not fun. I hate the phrase, find a job that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Doesn't exist. There's not a single person in the world that has not had a day where they go, oh, this job. Everybody. You can have a person that loves their job more than anything else. They have one thing in that job that they absolutely despise. And maybe the rest of the job makes it completely bearable for them. But every job sucks in one place somewhere some so some jobs suck more than others i'm going to bring up retail over and over again because it sucks um every job sucks every job is hard but if you learn how the job works and for a small business that means learning how small businesses work okay what is um what is my revenue? What are my costs? What assets do I have? What liabilities do I have as they relate to this particular company? Basic starting with that stuff can give you such a leg up. Then you can go, okay, this uh, for content creation specifically, this video made this much money in this amount of time. This video made this much money in this amount of time. Okay, now I'm starting to develop patterns. Now I can start looking at the market as a whole. Find other channels that have similar themes to you, similar sizes to you, and see what their view counts are. If their view counts go down and yours go down, there's a good chance something is happening in the market that is affecting your view counts. It's not because this video was horrible and I can never do this video again. No. If your video views go down and the rest of the market goes up, well then something is happening to your channel in particular. And again, that doesn't mean this video is bad and I'm being punished because I'm not allowed to do the things I like. If I hear one more content creator goes, well this is what I want to do, but I can't do that because no one will watch it. So I just have to do this because it's my job. Go fuck yourself. First of all, you have not done the, the, uh, the due diligence necessary to know that the reason that video did poorly was because of the game you were p -p -p playing. Go fuck yourself. Learn how to run a business. Um, so going back to the, the, this idea, we need to stop encouraging people to become full-time content creators. No, we need to start encouraging people to learn how businesses work. Because there's a very good chance that the person that starts out as a content creator will discover that they actually enjoy the content that they are making uh, or the subject of the content that they're making more than the content itself. And you might see people shift from making videos about D&D &D to becoming game designers and uh, self-publishing, publishing through the DMs Guild, publishing through Drive Through RPG, which is technically the same thing, but different. Um, publishing through Itch.io. Um, you uh, m -m -m may find uh, p -p people uh, that realize that the aspects of the content creation that they, they enjoy uh, is the creative writing and the things like that. Um, and, you know, just creating really, really good, solid scripts and things like that. And they may branch out f -f from content creation to, to, to writing in the various places that writing exists. You can be a copywriter, uh, you can be a script writer, speech writer, um, jingle writer. There are so many d -d 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 different things. But if the only thing you're focusing on is, oh, making, making videos is super hard and running a business is even more hard because I got to look at numbers, then you're never going to learn anything. Knowing how business works will uh, benefit you no matter where you go. Because the best way to get what you want when you are working for someone else is to speak in the language of the business. And if you don't understand businesses, you are never going to speak that language, ever. 
I cannot tell you how many times, you know, you want to know why all these boycotts and things like Twitch do better. You want to know why that didn't work? It's because you had a bunch of people that don't understand how a business works yelling at a business for working the exact way it's supposed to work. And then not offering any solutions that actually work. Twitch do better. Do better what? We'll do better. Okay, better by what metric? Do better. Doesn't mean anything. Because you had a bunch of people that never took the time to learn how the business works. I have seen, uh, and being a creative, I have seen this over and over and over again. One of uh, one of the people that I used to admire so much, um, some of that admiration has gone down. Because of that, I'm not going to single them out. Um, they were a content creator. Um, innovator uh, in the early days of YouTube and the, 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 the things like that started their own company um, and then hated the fact that it was a company and uh, eventually um, quit the company uh, effectively by saying you know what I don't want to run a business I just want to create cool things and I hate that so much because to me that is basically going, God, I want to lose weight, but I don't want to work out and I don't want to change my diet. Well, tough titty, said the kitty, but the milk's still good. That's not how it works. You want to be your own boss? You want to be able to create the things that you want? You want to be able to do things without someone else telling you what to do? Congratulations, you need to make your own business. You want to be your boss? Then learn how to be a boss. That's how it works. You don't get one without the other. And this is so common for creatives to sit there going, well, I just want to create things. Okay, the studio system exists. You could go do there. Yeah, but then they'll tell me what to create. Yeah, because they took the time and effort to create their own business and they learned how businesses work. And now they get to tell you what to do. Well, I just want to make my own stuff and get paid for it. Congratulations, learn how to run a business. I cannot say this any more emphatically. Uh, first of all, capitalism, not a dirty word. It's a fantastic, wonderful system. Has it been abused? Fuck yeah. But that doesn't mean that making money is somehow evil or understanding how capitalism works is somehow selling out or you're becoming part of the capitalist machine and you're just going to... No. Capitalism has worked where every other form of uh, economy has failed over and over and over again. It's, it's not a perfect system. A lot of times it's not even a great system, but it's a system that works and it's the system that we're in. And so cry about it, yell about it, do whatever you want. If you want to exist inside it, you have to at least understand it. You don't like it? Perfectly fine. But you need to understand it to figure out if you even... Uh, uh, if your opinions about it are even based on anything real. Learn how economics work. And I'm not talking about go through, you know, economics 101 and, and learn about market forces and all that. You don't need to know that. What you do need to understand is markets exist. And what you do in a market can affect it. Sometimes. But what a market does will always affect you. Uh, the YouTube algorithm is a really great example of the market affecting everybody. The YouTube algorithm is this mythical, magical thing that nobody knows what it is. It is, it is the, the deity of YouTube. People pray to it. People make sacrifices to, to, to it. Um, uh, it's, it's incredible. And yet nobody knows. Most people, there are people that think it doesn't exist. There are YouTube atheists. But every time it changes, everything on the platform changes. It doesn't matter what you are doing. When the market changes, your business changes. And you may not change a single thing about your business, but it will change. So understand the basics of economics. Markets exist. Market forces exist. You have to look at your market. See what things happen in it. See what things affect it. Anyone remember the adpocalypse and part two and part three? Uh, we might be going through another one now. Who the hell knows? Those are all things of market forces putting pressure on the market and changing it. It's how it works. 
Uh, the same thing is true about learn how a business works. Learn about assets and liabilities. Learn what revenue is and the difference between revenue and profit and income. Uh, learn what a draw is. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, if you are running a business and you are the owner, um, you can, if it's an LLC where it's a separate company um, or a bunch of other things, there's also S-Corps and C-Corps and all those other things. But if it is uh, not a sole proprietorship, um, where you and the business are separate things, there are a couple different ways you can get paid. One, you can work for the business and you become an employee of the business. Or two, you can do what's called a draw, where you pay yourself directly from the uh, the bank account of the business. And there's, there's legal ways to do it and there are illegal ways to do it. Um, and it is an incredibly common thing for business owners to do because turning yourself into employee is very, very complicated and creates issues where there don't need to be in a lot of situations. So a draw, significantly easier, more simple, and it makes sure that you actually have money that you can use without having to worry about that whole piercing the corporate veil and stuff like that. And again, all of this stuff you can learn about in a couple weeks through YouTube videos, uh, through online uh, guides, through books. I know this is a crazy one. There are books that exist that teach you how to run businesses. I would be uh, I would be very shocked if there weren't books specifically about how to run a YouTube channel as a business, um, because there's a market for, for for that. So anyway, the whole point of this very rambly clickbaity video is uh, another D and D YouTuber was wrong. No, the whole point of this is um, if you want to create your own thing and make money off of it. If you want to become your own boss in any way you want to do that, whether it's, you know, uh, becoming an independent game designer, becoming an independent comic writer, um, starting your own YouTube channel, starting your own Twitch channel, starting your own TikTok channel, starting your own Twitter blue, which is now X VI. I, I don't know. I've, I've run out of, I've stopped trying to figure out exactly what the new names of things are over on that website. If you want to do any of that stuff, learn how a business works. Again, it's not complicated and it's not easy. But it's 100% worth it. And when you actually go through the steps of learning how a business runs, learning how to write a business plan, things like that, your life becomes significantly easier and you won't eventually become the person going, ah, oh, gosh darn it, being a content creator is really hard. We need to stop encouraging people to be content creators because there are a lot of people who just aren't cut out for it. No, the people that quote unquote aren't cut out for it are the people that you told to be creative instead of, hey, learn how business taxes work. Learn what quarterly filings are. That's the problem here. And I think a lot of people that get quote unquote burnt out are getting burnt out because they have taken the hard way to learn how to run a business by failing over and over and over again. I say this all the time. Failure, significantly better teacher than success will ever be. But it takes a toll. And if you're in a situation where uh, when you fail, you don't eat, it becomes a less and less useful teacher because you just start hating failure because failure means, hey, I get to have hunger pains. And if you've never experienced actual real hunger pains from not eating for like four or five days, it is a mind blowing experience. <laughs> you will... You will never think of, oh, my tummy hurts the same way as feeling your insides eating themselves. Um, yeah, uh, uh, being poor is not fun, folks. Um, so, yeah, I, a lot of the people that quote unquote burn out um, that uh, that eventually go, you know what? I don't want to run this business. I just want to make cool things. So I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to have this other person do it for me. Those are all people that just never took the time to learn how to run a business. Now, there is diminishing returns. Um, eventually, if you start employing other people, 
running a business becomes significantly more complicated. The more employees you have, the more complicated it gets. And eventually it stops being, hey, you can learn all you need in a couple of weeks to, hey, you should really think about getting a degree. Um, fun fact, most of the stuff you learn in business school is completely useless. But in the four-ish years that you will be in business school, with the just pile and just mountain of bullshit they will give you that is completely worthless there's actually some good stuff in there um and finding it on your own um when you are dealing with a large company where you're getting you know anywhere between about 20 and this is technically still a small a small business but once you get above probably about 20 to 50 employees uh things get massively complicated very 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 quickly um dozen employees you can still teach yourself that Anything higher than that, business school, I hate it, uh, but it's an option. Um, actually working in a management position, um, that's where I learned most of my stuff was actually running a store. Um, and that was a, that was being thrown in the deep end without floaties. Um, but uh, learned a lot, learned a lot of really, really good stuff very, 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 very quickly. Would recommend it completely, but... Um, doing things like talking to other people that run businesses. Um, surprisingly enough, especially self-made businessmen uh, and women and people, non-binary, whatever you want to call them. Um, a lot of them are extremely proud of what they did to do. And as long as you are not stopping them from being able to do their jobs, a lot of them really enjoy being able to give out the help that they didn't get. Not all of them. But reaching out to other content creators that are a little bit bigger than you uh, and saying, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? A lot of them are very, very happy to give you a heads up. Not all of them. Again, there is a particular D&D &D content creator that's going, we need to stop telling people to be content creators because it's hard. And they're just not ready for how hard it is. I'm going to say that as many different ways as I can because I hate that sentiment so much. And again, if you guys really want to go out and figure out who it was that said it, I'm not going to stop you. Please, 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 please do not harass this person. I genuinely believe that they thought they were giving good advice. It wasn't. But they live in their own little bubble and their success has gone straight to their head. And they think they're a much bigger deal than they are. By the way... If the person I'm talking about is actually watching this, first of all, you have much better things you can do with your t uh, your time. Why are you watching this? Um, but if you are watching this and you're getting offended, um, good. I had the utmost respect for you. You lost all of it. And I 100% believe that you could be amazing if you just get out of yourself. You are such a talented, amazing person. And this petty bullshit needs to stop. Because you're better than that. So much better. And the skill that you have, I would kill for. That being said, uh, I'm going to be done with this. Moral of the story, learn how businesses work. They're not that complicated. At least small businesses aren't. And no matter what you do, whether you are, you know, a retail employee for the rest of your life or you become the CEO of a Fortune 500 cookie company, learning how businesses work will help you in every aspect of your life. It's just how it is. It really is a useful thing. Now, don't get super assessed about it. Don't make money the number one motivator for everything don't make your business's success the number one motivator for you everything can become bad if you let it but understanding how the system works is good it's always going to be good and i strongly strongly encourage if you can and again not everybody can most can people like me with disabilities that prevent you from working, I'm probably never going to be a small business owner. Or if I am, is it going to be a raw small business? But uh, most people can learn how to run a small business. 
without too much work or without too much effort. Lots of work, not a lot of effort. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. My brain's going at this point. Anyway, learn how to run a business is good for you. It'll help you. If you want to become a content creator, I highly recommend it. Uh, the reason that I do this, I make no money off my channel. It has not been monetized in years. And the years that it was monetized, at one point this channel was monetized, folks. The time that it was monetized, I never made enough, enough off the channel to get my first paycheck. YouTube, I think, still owes me like 30 bucks or something like that. The entire time this channel was monetized, I made like 30 or 40 bucks that I will never see. Um, but it is incredibly rewarding to see the channel succeeding as much as it is, uh, especially with, with my barriers to being able to run a channel uh, and the difficulties that I have. I'm always super, super excited when people see my stuff and comment on stuff like that. And I would love a million more D&D &D channels. Right now, uh, the D&D &D YouTuber space is remarkably closed. Um, yeah, anyone can make a channel, but the ones that are going to get pushed to the top are... I don't know, there's maybe a dozen that... Most people are going to see if they search Dungeons and Dragons on YouTube, you might see a dozen, maybe two dozen different channels, and that's it. And that's not good. Especially since a lot of these channels are shit. And we saw that after the whole OGL debacle, and they all turned into morons that just decided to hate against a company because they were told to by a lying journalist. Um, in my opinion. I would like to put that in there. Um, so, yeah, I think everybody, if you want to start a YouTube channel, do it. Doesn't mean you're going to make a shit ton of money off of it, but learn how business works. You don't, you don't need to be a multimillionaire to have a successful channel. You don't need to make a six-figure salary off of your YouTube channel to have a successful channel. Hell, uh, in order to live anywhere other than like California and big cities you can live pretty comfortably off of like 50 grand a year and getting that is not massively impossible it takes work and it takes knowledge and you probably won't do it entirely from your YouTube channel but you learn how to diversify you learn what things about you are marketable what things about you uh, make profit you can probably find a way to be self-employed or it will teach you what kind of business you want to be a part of. Maybe self-employment isn't for you, which is perfectly fine, but trying it out and learning how it works is going to make you a better employee everywhere else. And being a better employee as much as, Oh, that's horrible. That's, that's horrible. Corporatist talk. And that's capitalism. The capitalism sable. No, Good employees are valuable, and good employees get hired. You don't want to be unemployed? Become a good employee. That doesn't mean that all good employees get hired. There's a lot of bad employees that are just good at making them look like good employees. But your chances are better if you're a good employee than a bad one. And this comes from someone that worked in staffing. Uh, and in uh, team development and training and all these other things, I can tell a good and bad employee real quick. So, anyway, that's all for me. I just, uh, I saw the tweet like last night or something, and it has been in my brain uh, since then. So, and I like making clickbait titles every so often. I don't get to do it much. Um, and uh, <laughs> it's just, for me, it's really funny. I love making clickbait titles that are obviously clickbait, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, that's all for me today. I will see you guys then the next time. All right. Bye-bye.